creating a rotating cube. If you entered all the code in the previous video you can simply carry on. If not, the starting template for this video is app.js in the folder Start Lecture 5. Let's add an object. Using the 3GS library we create an object that we can see by creating geometry and a material. We'll look at the other geometries that we can create using the library in a later video. Here we create a box. Since we pass no parameters, it's one unit wide, high and deep. We create an instance of a type of material called mesh standard material. This is quite a sophisticated material and we'll learn more about it later in this course. For now we simply set its colour value using 0x FF 0, 0, 0, 0. We have the maximum value applied to the red channel, FF, a minimum to both the green and blue channels, each set to 0, 0. Consequently, the material is red. Now we have geometry and a material, we can create a mesh. This takes the geometry as parameter 1 and the material as parameter 2. But before we can see this, we have to add it to the scene. If we save and use live server, all we see is a black square. To prove this is actually 3D, let's add some code to the render method. Enter this.mesh.rotateY 0.01. Save and let live server refresh. Now you can see it looks more 3D, but it's still black and it should be red. What's gone wrong? The reason's simple. In our scene there are no lights to illuminate the surface of the cube. Let's add some just after the scene is initialised. We'll create an ambient light, one that illuminates not based on location or position. A hemisphere light has a different colour for surfaces that point up. They'll be hit by a white light, FF, FF, FF. But surfaces pointing down will get a bluey grey coloured light hitting them. We control the intensity of this light with the third parameter and here it's set to 0.3. For the light to affect the scene it must be added to the scene. As well as the ambient light we'll add a directional light. This type of light points from its position to the origin 0, 0, 0, or a target object if one has been assigned. By moving it to 0.211 we can control the direction in which the light points and then of course we need to add it to the scene. Save and refresh and now it's looking like a rotating red cube. But there are a couple more things to do before we complete. At the moment the user cannot interact with the page at all. Using an orbit control instance is very easy to allow the user with a mouse or touch event to rotate the scene. An orbit controls instance requires a camera as the first parameter and the renderer's DOM element as the second parameter. If we save and refresh, now dragging the mouse rotates the view of the scene. But there's still another little problem to address. If we resize the window, then the renderer does not resize. We need to add some code to the resize method. We update the camera aspect ratio, remember that's the window's inner width divided by its height. And by so doing we need to update the projection matrix, so this aspect ratio amend is part of the calculations. And we must adjust the renderer's size. Save and refresh, now resizing the window causes the renderer to resize. But try commenting out the update projection matrix line to see its effect. See how the cube gets stretched as we resize the window and loses its cube shape. Now a little challenge. Can you change the rotation of the cube so it rotates around the X axis and not the Y axis? Pause the video and give it a try. Nice easy one. Just a case of changing rotate Y to rotate X. I hope you can see how easy the 3GS library is to use and how flexible. In the next video we'll look at a great online tool for you to use that will help you learn about the library. See you in a minute.